Hi everyone, welcome back for another video. Welcome back all my lovely regular viewers and if you're new to my channel, welcome. So it's another Glitter Bells tutorial because you all know how much I love Glitter Bells. So some of these colours I've used in my other videos um, except for the Parma Violet because it is new. So I thought I would go ahead and do a set using the um, Christmas Gnomes, the Gonks. So this is my take on the Gonks. For the acrylic application, I'm going to keep it in real time, but I will speed it up whenever it comes to doing the filing and um, the artwork because I don't want the video to be too long for you guys. And this is the Parma Violet. It's very, very pale, so I'm trying to work it really, really concentrated um, because I want to get that colour consistent. And throughout this video, of course, I'm using the kind of um, lilac-y, purpley tones. And unfortunately, even though I love Glitter Bell so much, the um the lilac and purple tones they marble so so much but you can see throughout the video just how i work it to try and get your color consistent so i'm going back in with another bead of the parma violet just to get a little bit more color into it i didn't actually think it was as pale as it is so i am trying to to work with it quite in small beads and really really concentrated Oh my goodness, it actually seems like take forever just to do this bottom half of this nail. I just keep um, trying to do as much work as I can with my brush um, before it starts to cure because the, the more you do with your brush, you know, finishing and shaping your nails when it comes to filing them, it won't, um, you won't have to do as much work with them. So this nail is actually going to be an ombre and I'm going in with Indigo Rain, which is this gorgeous kind of pale purpley lilac-y colour. You can see there the marble in it. I'm not worrying too much because I am going to do this nail as an ombre and I have found that these two colours ombre really, really nicely. So I do prefer when I'm doing an ombre to at least let the bottom colour even start to mattify and that way the colours, they don't blend together. Because sometimes if both colours are still wet, you don't get, you know, a really true ombre. You kind of need to let one of them cure slightly before you go in. So you can see here up the cuticle area, I'm just working that product. I just keep kind of like swirling it round and round just to get the colour consistent. And then I'll just blend it forward into the rest of that um, indigo rain. So on the rest of this nail, I'm going to be adding some snowflakes and some stars. I thought that the snowflakes could have kind of held on to the tacky layer um, before it started to mattify, but they're kind of too big. So I'm going to go on and put a bead of glass slippers down, which is the clear from Glitter Bells. And I'm going to set the, um, the snowflakes and the stars into those.
So I'm not finished with the little finger, but I want to get all the colored acrylic out of the way before I start to do any glitter. So I'm moving on now to the middle finger and this is going to be a full coverage of the indigo rain. So you can see even from the first bead that I've laid down, I'm really needing to work this product just so that colors consistent. And especially because this is going to be a complete full cover of this nail, I really need to make sure that I have that color consistent. It can be a bit frustrating, you know, trying to work with the product, especially if you're just starting out doing acrylics. Um, you know, you are aware of your working time, making sure that the product doesn't cure before you've finished um, putting it where you need it. But it's really, really necessary to try and get this color consistent. But there you go, with a little bit of swirling around, we've got a consistent colour. It's such a gorgeous colour. It is a shame that you do have to work it a bit much, but I absolutely love this colour. It's kind of like maybe a few shades um, deeper than Petal Candy. It is really, really nice. So onto the pointer finger and this is more or less going to be the same as the little finger so it's going to be an ombre with the parma violet and the indigo rain. So you can see with the parma violet I've literally just drained out as much of the liquid from my brush as possible and that's going to keep the, um, the bead of acrylic more concentrated with the colour rather than having it too wet and you'll not get as much of the colour coming through. So I'm just using the belly of my brush just to guide it and press it down to the free edge. When you look at how it is at the minute on the nail, it's kind of like a natural ombre. If you can see like um, up at the top part where we've put the bead or where I've put the bead, it's you can see the color. But then as I started to spread it down towards the free edge, it, the color has kind of changed. So you could do this as a natural ombre. You know, you could have just went in with more of the Parma Violet above the first bead and kept the bottom part of it in that ombre. 
There is another product um, with a different company that does that and it's super, super easy if you're doing like a lilac -y design. I will pop it in the description box. Um, I don't want to say it on the video because it's a Glitter Bells tutorial, but I will pop it in the description box for you. And again, as this is an ombre, I'm going in with the indigo rain and you can see me working it again before I start to spread it down the nail to ombre it. But you can see just how easy this one ombres. These two colours are lovely together. So again, you can see that I'm working that product again up at the cuticle area. When I'm working with coloured acrylics, you want to try and work um, really, really thinly and um, because they're not strength powders and we do need to go over and cap them with a clear. So the clear from Glitter Bells is called Glass Slippers and that's what I'll use to make sure that I've got my apex in place and that there's enough strength on the nails to so that I know that they're not going to break. So recently I have been doing the thumbs with my sets. So I normally, if I'm doing the thumb in any of my tutorials, I do the thumbnail the same as the little finger. So this is gonna be another ombre, but I am gonna do it slightly different with the placement of the snowflakes and the little stars.
So now that I've finished with all the coloured acrylic, it's glitter time. So the glitter I'm using is this gorgeous one. It's called Lavender Crush and I absolutely love it. The other glitter that you can see on the table is called Ify. And I'm going to be using both of those glitters on the ring finger, but just the Lavender Crush on the rest of the nails. Back to the pointer finger now and I'm going in with some of the glass slippers, the clear acrylic and I'm going to start to place the snowflakes. So because the, um, the snowflakes are quite large it wouldn't just stick to the tacky layer. Um, you can use glue slitter that way, you know, if it is really really fine. Um, you can just run your brush dipped in monomer just across the nail and sometimes that's enough to be able to stick the um the loose glitter it would probably have been enough to stick the little stars but the snowflakes are too big and that's why i'm popping on some clear acrylic Then just to finish this nail off, I've been in with a lavender crush and I'm just going to blend that in, in and around the cuticle area and then between the snowflakes. Back to the thumbnail there and I'm sorry I'm just slightly out of frame but I have popped on some of the glass slippers just so that I can press the snowflakes into that and the stars. So normally I would do the thumbnail the same as the little finger but because it's so much larger I'm actually going to make more of a feature of the snowflakes and add a little bit more of them. I love the way these little snowflakes kind of change colour depending on what way you look at them. So when you turn your nails, sometimes they um, reflect as blue and then other times you get that pinky purple colour from them as well. So I'm just going to finish this nail off by just adding some of the lavender crush.
onto the ring finger and I'm so excited to do this nail for you. Um, I'm going in with lavender crush up towards the cuticle area and I'm going to blend that down to maybe about two thirds of the nail and then I'll go in with Efe. Um, it's the first time I've used these two colours together and wow, they oh my goodness, they are so lovely together. Wow, just look at those two colours together. It is stunning. It's so nice. I would definitely use these colours together again. So this is going to be the nail that I'm going to do the little Christmas elf on or Christmas gnome on and I can't wait to show you. Okay, so now I've finished applying all the coloured acrylic and the glitter, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cap them all in glass slippers. For um, the video though, I'm not going to show them all being capped, just to keep the length of the video down for you guys.
So on the ring finger, I am capping it in the glass slippers, but I'm not going to worry too much about building up my apex because I am going to go ahead and I'll be doing 3D acrylic artwork on top. So to put the apex on, it would mean that the little Christmas gnome would just be sitting way, way too high on the nail. Now that all the nails have been capped in the glass slippers, I'm going to go ahead and do my normal filing routine. So you can see I start at the side walls. I'm using my Glitter Bells metal board file with a 100 grit and a 180 grit refill. So I always start at the side walls and then I go to the lower arch as you can see and I make sure that's nice and straight and coming out in line with the natural nail. Once I'm happy with that, I go on to the free edge and I make sure that's nice and straight. If it's a coffin or a square, I normally just run my um, file up vertically, up and down, and just make sure that it's kept nice and straight. Once I've done all that, I go around the cuticle area. I've kept this part in real time for you just to see, and then once I'm filing over the rest of the nails, I will speed it up a little bit. So once I'm happy with the cuticle area, I just file over the rest of the nail, just always up towards that apex, to keep the height of the apex, which will keep the um, sound structure of your nail. So this is the part of the filing routine that I have just put into double time. So I'm just going in with a normal board file. I'm not using my metal one because I find sometimes the metal one is a little bit too stiff when you go to file around the rest of the nail. You kind of need that little bit of um, flexibility when you're doing this. And then once I'm happy with the shape of the nail, I'll go in and finish it all with a buffer. With the buffer. <laughs> and then I will go ahead and apply my top coat. Now they're all filed and shaped, it's time to give them a quick wipe over with some alcohol just to remove any dust and debris and then it's top coat time. So I absolutely love top coat time, especially if there's glitter involved because it literally just comes to life. I'm so excited for this ring finger and wow, just oh my goodness, that is so nice. I would, I'm definitely going to use these colours again. So before I start the little Christmas gnome, I'm going to go in to the onto the middle finger and I'm going in with the same glitters, the Lavender Crush and the Efe, and I'm going to do like some Christmas baubles. So when working with the glitter, um, sometimes it's a little bit harder to get um, a, a round smooth like shape. So I'm really, really trying to work it so that it keeps the height and it also keeps the shape that I need it.
So now I'm going to do the second bobble and I'm using Efi and I'm going to do this one. I think they're like teardrop shapes. So I'm just using my brush just to press it into the shape that I want. Um, again, though, because I'm working with the glitter, I have to work a little bit wetter just so that the glitter can be moved. And then it does take me just slightly longer to get the shape correct. Moving back to the ring finger now and I'm going to start doing the Christmas gnome. So I'm going to be using Snowdrops White to do his beard and I'm just going to do this with separate beads of acrylic and I'm just going to shape them down into a point to mimic what his beard would look like. So I will just continue that um, over the bottom half of this nail. Um, once I've done the first layer, I will go in then with smaller beads and I'll only bring them down to about halfway down to the first beads of acrylic that I've shaped into the beard.
So now that I'm happy with the beard, I'm going to go ahead and use Peterbell cover to do his nose. So I'm just going to pick up a round bead of the Peterbell cover and just place it just on top of the last layer of his beard. And then I'll shape it up to look like his nose and pop in two wee indentations for his nostrils. To do his hat, I'm going in again with the indigo rain and I'm going to have to work it again as I did all the other times. So I'm going to do this in three layers because we want to see, the, or I want to see that it's kind of looking um, like wrinkled and folded. So I just placed it directly above his nose and I'm just going to pat it in around and pat it right down until it joins the little beard. In with the second bead, I'm not going to work this bead of the indigo rain. I kind of want the different colour. Um, it'll show, you know, all the different layers of his little hat. And then in with the last one and I'm going to blend this into the rest of the, the hat but the point and um, the top of it I'm going to bring into kind of like a point so that I can put a pom pom on the end of it. I did initially go in with the lavender crush but because there was already lavender crush on the um, base of the nail I you couldn't really see the pom-pom so I have went in again then with the snowdrops white and before it starts to fully cure I use my tweezers just to poke it and make it give it a little bit of texture. Back now to the middle finger and just to do some decoration on the Christmas baubles. So I'm using my white gel paint from Mystic Nails and I'm just painting on these white lines just to give it the, um, just a little bit of decoration on these baubles.
So all that's left to do on this nail is to do the strings that the balls are held under the tray by and then add um, a snowflake and some stars. The nail art paint that I'm using is from Mystic Nails and whenever you cure this under your LED lamp it um, cures with a non-tacky layer so I don't need to apply any top coat or anything over this, it's just ready to go as soon as it comes out from the light. And here is the finished set guys. I have really enjoyed doing these little Christmas gnome nails. I hope you have. If you have, give it a thumbs up and I will see you all in the next video. So take care. See you soon. Bye.